Yo, what's cracking, folks? Welcome to episode number 22 of The Painter and the Pixie. <laughs> 22. Yeah, buddy. Yes. Uh, I'm your host, Jeremy Vassar, and as always, I'm joined by your lovely lo- other lovely host, <laughs> Serena Vassar. Hi, everybody. And uh, in this episode of the podcast, we're talking all things uh, skincare, I guess. Skincare, sun protection, deodorants, flea and tick protection for your dog. And then some, you know, some other type of... Uh, yeah, and like kind of bug spray bug for spray, yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I thought we we did it. It was very comprehensive. I thought it was yeah. good. It's very, a really, it was a fun episode to do. So yeah, it's you know we're entering the summer season, mm-hmm. so a lot of people walking their dogs and out in the woods and uh, you know getting hit up by the sun, all mm-hmm. that jazz. So thank God that it's warm out. Yes, the sun Finally is coming back. out and showing itself. Summer. <laughs> so I had to engage with that in a in a, a fun and healthy way. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, without further ado, please enjoy episode number 22 of The Painter and the Pixie. This is only the beginning. All right. Ready? Ready. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. Well, I don't believe it. Let's find out. Ready, set, go. Hello, Miss Lady. How you doing? Hello. I'm well. How are you, Jeremy? I'm, I'm doing well. Doing well, hanging out, and uh, ready to talk about all things skincare. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun episode. Yeah, we got some. We got a little bevy of products in front of us here, so yeah. some things we like using, some things we may not like using. So. Yeah, true. Um, but uh, I know you wanted to start with, uh, you know, we planned on doing this episode mm-hmm. a little while ago, and then we kind of had some updates, and then you just had a an appointment with a uh, holistic vet with yes. uh, Mr. Gus yesterday, and they were talking about some skincare stuff uh, for him. Yeah. And uh, particularly with, um, I know any of our listeners that happen to be dog owners, now is tick season. It is indeed. And uh, in the Northeast, we have a shit ton of ticks. So we do. It's, We've it's, already gotten, you had a tick on you. Oh, yeah. I've had Gus two ticks had on two me. or three ticks on him. Yeah. So, and it's... Um, it's a pain in the butt, and it I'm is. I'm usually the one that's pulling the ticks off of mm-hmm. the dogs. So I've done that through all of the dogs yeah, I've owned. That's true. Um, I've pulled ticks off of neighbors' dogs. It's just yeah. is something I've <laughs> just developed. A, You're good at it. I guess it's it's a one skill. of it's one of my many callings in life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, yeah we, it, it's we were a, it's a thing. Particularly now, if mm-hmm. you're going to take your dog to sorry, I mean interrupt that's you, but true. like if you take your dog on a hike or uh, yeah. even, like you said last week, they com- they completed the loop around Peace right, Valley. If right. you walk your dog there, you're sure to get ticks. Yeah, which uh, just side note, I did actually run it this week. Yeah, and it was great. So very good. The 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 path at Peace Valley Park in lovely Bucks County is very nice. So you don't have to get on any roads mm-hmm. at all. It, it's the new part of the path is very nicely paved they've actually repaved a lot of the old paths too mm. so it's very it's uh it's in a good shape right now cool, but very cool. there's a lot of long grass that kind yeah. of abuts the trails and your dogs obviously are going to go into the path and then the ticks will into drop the on them from the yeah from the long grass yeah. and uh yeah, you will for sure get them and there's yeah. a crap ton of deer around there so oh, yeah. it's just it's, inevitable it's inevitable so it was really great having gus at this appointment yesterday and he you know some of you have learned from my vlogs if you watch my vlogs he's had some chronic ear infection issues so i finally found this amazing holistic vet oh my goodness woman after my own heart it was <laughs> such a great appointment yeah. i won't linger here very long uh-huh. but it was fantastic and i just love it because she is a great holistic vet. She's kind of like me where, yeah, use the very best knowledge you can for diet and natural resources, but also know when you need to use medicine right? because right. it's not all medicine is bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you, but for dogs. <laughs> yeah. Like me, but for dogs, it was yeah. fantastic. But she gave me some really great options for not necessarily skincare for dogs, but flea and tick prevention and some other things. Now I had known a little bit, but I, everything that I knew was related to humans. And I'm like, I don't know what's safe for dogs, what's not safe for dogs. And like, you can go online and research stuff and, and you can get like, everyone says everything online. Yeah. You can, you can find for, against, for everything. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so then I thought that would be a nice little way to kind of, uh, another at layer to add to this particular conversation here about skincare and sun protection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then what did she, because, all right, so normally what I have had to do in the past is mm-hmm. do like frontline 
or uh, had Advantix too. Yeah, and like Frontline is usually a uh, you like put it on the back of their neck, mm-hmm. and then I was always uncomfortable with it because then they're like, yeah, don't pet your dog for three days because yeah. you basically poison their skin. Mm-hmm. I'm like that can't I be know. good for them. I know. I love this. It's basically a pesticide, a topical pesticide that you put on the dog. Yeah. That eventually gets into their bloodstream and their bloodstream is then mildly poisoned so that whenever ticks and stuff bite into them and start sucking their blood, they die. Right, right. So if we don't, if, especially for us, right, and anybody who's listening to our show, they're, they're, most people are more down this vein here of trying to do things more naturally, trying to avoid pesticides on our food. So if we're avoiding pesticides on our food, why would we put pesticides on our dogs? Yeah, I was never pumped about it. And then they have an oral one that kind of does the same thing. Yeah, you just bypass the external route. You yeah. get it right in to them yeah so which which i do i mean you got to see like what the trade-off would be right. like is it better to have a dog covered in ticks or to have a slightly poisoned dog that's not covered in ticks mm-hmm. so yeah it, there are trade-offs and you do yeah. have to evaluate that and for me being a holistic minded individual having a service dog who comes with me everywhere i do have to take into consideration the fact that he's exposed to a lot more things than most dogs are exposed to. Right. He's out in the public with me, so if he's carrying anything, ticks and stuff, what if he drops one off, like they jump off of him in the store? Like, how disgusting is that? Yeah, Super yeah, gross. Yeah. So you do have to take those things into consideration when you have a working dog, but I was really happy. Look, reach over here. Really, really happy that she gave me some other options. So this mm-hmm. product, is it okay if I talk about this Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. So... This product is called, the brand name is Wonderside, W-O-N-D-E-R-C-I-D-E, not side as in the side or something, which I thought it was at first. Wonderside, because it's a good pesticide that's natural. It's totally safe for humans. It's totally safe for dogs, for cats, for being around children, all kinds of stuff. The active ingredients in this, I'm holding it up here. You guys can see when you're looking on YouTube. Um, The active ingredient in here is cedar oil, cedar essential oil. And you know how they have cedar chests and you're supposed to be, that repels things, bugs and things. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'd have a, a lot of my clients and uh, my dad even had one at her old house way back in the day, mm-hmm. a cedar closet. Yes. So it keeps away like moths and stuff mm-hmm. so they don't like eat your suits and stuff like that. Yep. It keeps away a lot of bugs, a lot of critters. And it's especially good at repelling ticks and fleas. So it's specifically designed for animals, for the dogs, for ticks and fleas. So you just spray that on Mr. Gus? Yeah. And what you do is you take this, it's got some other things, fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, and flies. And the mosquitoes are really important because that actually is a heartworm prevention because heartworm is, um, carried by fle- mosquitoes yeah. when they bite them. And the, so and can we spray this on ourselves? So we could spray this on ourselves. For bug repellent? Yeah. You can actually do that. Ooh, yeah. So I it's like a cedar oil. You take it and it's a spray bottle. It's, um, it seems expensive. This bottle is 16 ounces, and that's going to run you anywhere between like 25 and $30. Yeah, but how often do you have to use it? Every single day. Oh. You spray it on your animal every single day. Oh, so he's going to smell like cedar. So he's going to smell like cedar for a, a while. Yeah, for the active months. Um, but when you look at the cost of making this, because I did the same thing. I bought this bottle of pre-made solution because I thought, hey, it's all these essential oils. I have them at home. It's lemongrass and cedar wood and some other things. And I'm going to read some. I wrote some st- statistics down for you guys. Um the cost of the oil itself, it's probably actually cheaper to buy it pre-made. It might be. I'll have to hmm. really double check on that because it, cedar wood oil, how much you have to use. Right, right. It yeah, may be cheaper for you to just buy it pre-made. That stuff's expensive. Some yeah. of the essential oils can be really expensive unless you've got a good retailer and you can find it um, that way. But anyway, you just spray them down, cover them in it, and they smell really nice. This product, this company, Cedar, excuse me. Wonderside has different scents. The cedar wood oil is the primary component in each of them, but I think they have, this one is lemongrass, Mm -hmm. which is nice. They have peppermint, they have regular cedar wood, and I think rosemary, so that the other scents there, the fragrances are just for us humans, so that it doesn't smell like cedar all the time. Well, I feel like you could also, um, you know, if you're not going to take them on a hike somewhere, you might not necessarily need to spray them down. Like I would, I would do it when, particularly if I was going to take them in the woods mm-hmm. or something like that. Same with like myself. Yeah. Um, so for that's, that's cool. I'm, I'm interested to see if it works and, mm-hmm. and then uh, how that all, but that's a pretty decent sized bottle. I feel like it would last a, a decently yeah, it long is. time. And Gus isn't a giant dog. So it's thing, not like you're going to be using a ton of it. But like frontline's mad expensive. Like yeah. that stuff's real expensive. Yeah. So. And that's true too. Cause I got frontline. I didn't get frontline. I got um, for him Advantix at the recommendation of the vet. Yeah. Canine Advantix, which is like a tube of poison that you put on their skin, right. <laughs> <laughs> which, like, I don't know. You have to do what you have to do sometimes. Yeah. Um, 
And that's a lot of money too. That can be very expensive. So this, if this works well, I haven't tried it out yet. So you guys, I'll give you an update sometime down the road. Dude, I'm down to try it on myself. Yeah. Because family dinner, I get chewed up. Yeah. Mosquitoes. So let me read this to you, Jeremy. It's sure. awesome. The This one that's pre-made has cedarwood oil. Cedarwood was is significantly effective against ants, red fire ants, and black-legged ticks. At the highest dosage, which this bottle contains the highest dosage per milliliter, it kills 100% of ticks oh it kills them kills them oh yeah kills them dead it's effective against ticks ants fleas mites lice and other creepy crawlies <laughs> it says mosquitoes too <laughs> and mosquitoes now some other components there are let me see here what's in this bottle we've got cedar wood lemongrass and sesame oil so just those two essential oils but the other blends have other essential oils now lemongrass is really interesting because the active ingredient in lemongrass is citronella citronella Oh, nice. And you know, you, you've gotten all those, you know, camping candles that have citronella essential oil in it. Mm -hmm. That's really effective against a lot of things. That specifically is works well against mosquitoes. So that's what that does. And um, the studies have shown that the most effective way to use citronella against mosquitoes is to mix it with a vanilla. Okay. Interesting, right? I'm, yeah. I don't know how that's going to smell. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. Because it's kind of like citrusy. The citronella is a little bit citrusy. Probably not bad. Yeah, vanilla. One of the active ingredients in vanilla is what makes it even super more effective. Interesting. Well, I'm, I'm stoked to try that out at family dinner. Yeah, me too. So other top essential oils, if you're looking at for making blends for yourself at home, are catnip essential oil, which is effective against mosquitoes, ticks, and other flying insects, and neem oil essential oil which people it's very common now to use neem in toothpaste for like alternative toothpaste it's antibacterial right. antimicrobial those types of things but it also works really well against mosquitoes um and other flying insects so those are some of the big ones yeah because we use a lot of those uh torches the tiki torches mm -hmm. that my my mom usually mm -hmm. lights those around the uh the table but it'd be nice to have something to just like really just put on like my forearms mm -hmm. and stuff um that isn't poison because I know off is probably what most people are uh, you know, familiar with putting mm -hmm. on their or body. Date. Yeah. Which is, uh, do you know anything about off as far as the chemical composition? Or no, I didn't look that one up. I, I would imagine it's not there. great for you exactly. though. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure it's not. There's a lot of chemical components that are not so good, but if you can use natural essential oils, that's fantastic. Right. right. And I'll link for you guys in the show notes. There's some really reasonable essential oil retailers that you can purchase from that are not um, like Young Living or doTERRA. Those are more high aromatherapy, end. high end. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you want function and you want to buy a bigger bottle, then there's something, there's a website called mountainroseherbs.com and then a couple of others that I can't think of at the top of my head right now, but I'll link some resources below. Um, yeah, I think those were the big ones. Those are awesome for dogs and for regular general bug spray. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm down because uh, one of the things that, um, you know, as the, the weather's finally warmed, mm -hmm. uh, more people are doing stuff outside, like particularly hiking. Yeah. Um, and again, your dogs aren't the only things that'll pick up ticks. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I used to do uh, a lot of trail running, one of the things that I would, um, that I started using every single time was knee high compression socks oh uh, yeah um so they they really come all the way up past your calf like really to your knee um and then the compression actually has a couple great features to it the one of the practical things is that ticks can't get through it and that's yeah, generally that's your, your legs are what's clipping through the glass the, the grass a lot of the time mm -hmm. so they they have a hard time getting through the sock and getting to your skin so they just kind of fall off which is nice that's helpful and the other part of the compression socks it just helps with recovery because it helps your blood circulate a little bit more mm -hmm. um, which is more for the actual act of running but you could use them for hiking as well yeah. but i i enjoyed using those and it's i actually ran in them last week oh yeah because uh, i was at peace valley and i know it's like filled with ticks. tick city so just definitely uh because lyme disease is no joke it so i don't no would like to not go through that mm. um but uh yeah so it's the same you know take care of your dogs take care of yourself yeah um, for sure but i would definitely like spray myself down be like little ch -ch -ch, yeah know. no i think that's really great we'll definitely give that a it's totally safe for humans too and like if you breathe it it's just gonna have a strong scent i would so imagine as long so. as you like the scent well, it's okay that's why i got lemongrass <laughs> instead of just plain cedar wood the thing is off smells terrible yeah, it does. so it's uh that's pretty potent potent stuff you know what's interesting i was looking when i was getting these statistics here for you guys um 
some of those commercial chemical components, uh, bug sprays and stuff, use essential oil constituents as their active ingredients, but then they put all this other stuff with it. So you're like, well, let's just see what happens. And I, I'm pretty, I'm sure too that essential oils work in with your skin, your body's own chemistry. Right. So right. some people will have a different reaction to a different type of essential oil. So go through this list. I'll link the list below too. I'll put that in the show notes and see if lemongrass works better for you or if citronella works better for you or if cedar works better for you or even peppermint can be a good repellent. Now peppermint... Yeah is actually not quite as good for things like ticks and fleas, but it's very good for spider repellent. It's more more up your alley. I'm not worried about spider. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Okay. So, all right. I like that. And then, uh, so that's that's for your dog and for, we covered bug repellent. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try these out. And then, uh, you know, we we should do a recap later in the summer. Once I've had a few rounds of family dinner and getting chewed up by mosquitoes. See see what works, works the best. Yeah, there are some, like I said, that are more geared towards mosquitoes than others. And I don't know that the lemongrass is specifically geared. Did I say that it was geared for mosquitoes? uh, Oh, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Effective against mosquitoes. That's the citronella component. Right, right, right. So do you want to move into sunscreen? Yeah, we can talk about Yeah, I love that idea. So sun protection is so important, right? Especially here in the summertime where there's lots of sun and you're out a lot outside mm-hmm. yeah you turn like tan instantly yeah it's great it's amazing i right? burn i burn once and then it turns to tan and but it's when wonderful. you burn you just turn pink yeah you don't burn burn most of the time uh, i've i've had some instances usually drinking has been involved but uh, uh yeah that's uh, true you and me got lit up on our i don't know honeymoon. If it was our honey- yeah it was honeymoon yeah it's terrible we were like <laughs> lobster red and got stung by jellyfish yeah that was, was on a, our honeymoon it was, a, it was not that the, was fun <laughs> it's just one day let's not do that again that day wasn't the best but um well and you're super pasty white so um yeah you burn very quickly i um, do i have the propensity for that for sure so do you want to talk about like what uh you know we're, we're entering the summer months yeah happy yay. june everybody um But, uh, you know, I just, you, I don't, I don't like sunscreen. So usually when I'm working outside, I rarely use it. Mm -hmm. Um, I tan up pretty quickly. So then I don't usually have an issue with it. But even if I go to the beach and I'm really exposed to the sun, I will Mm -hmm. end up burning. So I will, uh, you know, in SPF 30, you know, I usually just use like banana boat or whatever. Cause Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we've, you and I tried some more like quote unquote natural Mm -hmm. stuff before and got the shit burned out of us. So yeah, the um, time that we got the shit burned out of us was when I made our sunscreen Oh, and I did not do it correctly. So So that was totally (laughs) my fault. That was was 100% my bad. So I will say, I know we're about to cover, uh, you know, probably the, the, uh, good and bad yeah. of the mm-hmm. regular sunscreens, but a lot of them do prevent you from burning, which is, you know, obviously not the best for you. So do you right. want, you want to talk about like, what's, you know, is there is like, why, why should someone maybe reconsider using banana boat or, or other mm-hmm. regular brand versus what you're going to talk about? Yeah. Good question. So sunscreen, sun protection is important because like you said, you don't want to get burned every time your sun. So let me, let me first of all, dispel a big myth. Sun exposure is not harmful. A lot of people protect themselves completely. They don't get any sun whatsoever. And that's not a good thing. That's not what we're trying to do. Got to get your vitamin D. Yes. We're trying to avoid burns. When you have burns, you have, I mean, it's like if you've got a burn from an oven, you literally burned your skin and damaged the cells. That's the problem, right? Sun exposure is not the problem. Damaging your skin cells is the bigger problem. Yeah. So for people like me who are super white, Mm. super, super pale and burn super easily, I need to really consider sun protection as like a really big deal. Because I mean, I used to years ago, I was out in the sun, maybe 10 minutes and I would already be pink, if not red. Mm hmm. So that's a problem. Yeah. Well, you're a lot healthier now too. I'm a lot healthier now and that makes a huge difference. But there are basically two main types of sunscreen that are commercially available. There's a chemical sunscreen and a um, physical sunscreen. So a chemical sunscreen is what you've said, it, the um, like banana boat or what we've got right here. Yeah, banana boat. Copper tone. Copper tone. Those, yeah. Most commercially available, um, if you want to say unhealthy, sunscreens yeah. are... Traditional. Traditional, yeah. Our chemical sunscreens. And what that does, whoops. 
So a chemical sunscreen, basically, when you apply it to your skin, it, in, it interacts with the cholesterol in your skin and some other components that it actually will shift when UV rays from the sun hit your skin it will change the UV radiation to just infrared radiation. It diffuses it differently in your skin. Now that sounds benign and it sounds no problem, but the, the, the issue is the chemicals that these sunscreens use to do that mimic hormones in the body. So you can significantly disrupt hormone function and cause some confusion, right? That's We talked about this a while ago. Yeah. But when you have hormones or hormone-like substances in the body, it just causes a lot of confusion. So that can be a problem. Chemical sunscreens can also be really irritating to skin. A lot of people will have skin reactions or eczema or acne or those types of things, which you definitely don't. That's not a positive thing from your sun protection. Right, right. The typical most common ingredient that's the problem in these sunscreens, and now I'm looking here to see what our active ingredient is. <laughs> Avobenzoine and homosalate. Uh-huh. Salatate. Um, The most dangerous one is called oxybenzone, and that's the one that is significantly destroying all of the coral reefs. Like you, we talked Ah. about how, you know, Hawaii has totally banned commercial sunscreens. (laughs) So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because this particular chemical, you know, it interacts with our skin and does stuff. It interacts with other cellular membranes too, like the coral reef. Right. And because you're getting in the water and it's Mm -hmm. washing off and then are interacting. And I guess you have a lot of people swimming there and scuba divers and so forth. If they're all having sunscreen, it would do negative things to the coral reef. Well, it washes off. It gets right into the water. Now, on top of that, not only do you have it from that perspective, but there's all these aerosol spray sunscreens out there now too. And that stuff just gets right into the atmosphere and it, it will float off into the ocean as well. It's not just static right on your skin. Right. Um, and, I was talking to one of my friends who's giving statistics about this and they talk about how this particular chemical oxybenzone and some of these other commercial sunscreens actually kills phytoplankton, which is the bottom of the food chain of all of oceanic life. Yeah. So like if you get rid of that food source, you've significantly negatively impacted all of oceanic life. So there's actually not only interacting poorly with your own body, but it's actually having a negative impact possibly on the environment around you as well. Yes, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Okay. So the other type of sunscreen is called a physical sunscreen. And what that does, rather than creating a chemical reaction in your skin, is it actually provides a physical barrier. These are typically mineral-based sunscreens. So that's what I have here. This is Beauty Counter's new product called Counter Sun. And it is a non-nanized mineral sunscreen. So when you spray that on your skin, when you rub it on with a lotion or use one of those sunscreen stick bars, you actually are creating a very thin physical layer between sun exposure and your skin. So you're blocking, it's like wearing a thin t-shirt, right? Okay. It's blocking the UV rays from actually getting to your skin to begin with. Okay. And it's great. And I, I emphasize non-nanized because nanized particles are were really popular, but they're so small that they get into your skin rather than sitting on your skin and can cause different disruption as well can be problematic too gotcha gotcha so when it's non-nanized it just creates a thin layer and it's much less negatively impactful for the environment it's just minerals okay right and there's a carrier oil like coconut oil for example and i forget what the carrier oil is in here um yeah coconut oil sunflower oil um, which does, is fine too. That's totally benign for the environment. Does that go on just like normal sunscreen? So this one here, what I've got in front of me is their spray. They've never done a spray before to the extent of my knowledge. They've had a sunscreen lotion and a sunscreen bar. And this particular spray is great because it's not aerosol. It's just air propelled. Like a pump. Like a pump. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like you remember those old things that they used to spray the olive oil? Like you pump the olive oil to spray <laughs> yeah. on salads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. <laughs> no aerosol. It's just pressing the air out and expelling the sunflower oil mixture with... They have a couple of essential oils too, just so it smells nice. Right, right, right. Um, you got to make it smell like summer. Got to make it smell like summer, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's great because it doesn't smell like chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all of those things are totally benign. There's no known negative effect for the environment or you because it doesn't get into you. It doesn't absorb through your skin. So it's a really great way to still have good sun protection without negatively impacting your health or the health of the environment. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And, then- and there are others out there. There's actually the EWG. I mentioned them. I can't remember I mentioned them on our podcast. I know I mentioned them in some of my vlogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the EWG stands for Environmental Working Group, and they have a 
phenomenal amount of resources to help people find good better brands of sunscreen or better brands of makeup and beauty products and beauty counter has always all of their products come out top of the list healthiest most safe products out good. there yeah yeah which yeah. is awesome yeah well you want to be careful what you're putting on your skin for yeah. sure because uh yeah that gets into you it does i mean for so many years those of us who were into more holistic forms of you know skincare and health we would have to sacrifice performance for health right Right. And now there's wonderful companies such as Beauty Counter that are balancing evening the scales. Yeah. 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 And uh, I want, we'll, we're going to get to deodorants in a little while, but I noticed a, a dramatic uptick in like the quality of the more natural yeah. deodorants. But we'll come back to that because I want to say, too, with the sun, you know, you, there's also alternatives to even using any kind of sunscreen. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. like limiting your exposure. Also mm -hmm. wearing like, you know, a, a long sleeve light t-shirt yeah. or, uh, you know, I made fun of you cause you used to wear, you used to bring like a parasol, like an umbrella do, yes. with you. Um, and that just blocks all of the, the rays. And, and I will say my, my brother is also a, a pasty individual. He's blonde, <laughs> blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, and, uh, he would burn quite easily. So but his new favorite thing is he got a ginormous umbrella. Yes. That he brings best. to the beach and he's like, dude, I can like stay on the beach super long now. Mm -hmm. I don't even mind. Like I just mm -hmm. set it up and then he just stays under it. Yeah. Um, you know, then you, you get some sun walking around mm -hmm. to and fro, throwing Frisbees and doing whatever. But mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if you can, and, and then as the summer goes on, the more, the more sun exposure you have, your, at least my skin tans up mm -hmm. and I don't even really need a lot of sunscreen. I yeah. can, I just, my skin's ready to go. And, um, but for those that have a trouble retaining you know, being tan, then, <laughs> then they like, so th this is something particularly I have to consider because we do, we're in our exterior season right. and particularly when we do like decks, like I'm doing, I'm mm. standing a huge deck this week. And uh, a lot of times there's not that much shade mm. on some of it. So you're just getting blasted with sun. Yeah. I'll spray you down with this. <laughs> um, where, uh, I don't mind. Cause again, I tan quickly and I'm wearing a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. My brother just bitches the whole time. Yeah. So I have to like, you know, he's got to make I sure get he's, him he's, some sunscreen. he's got all his, <laughs> you know, fancy sunscreens that he puts on and mm -hmm. wears a hat and all that kind of stuff. But I just always give him a hard time. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't say what minerals these were. Yeah, go ahead. Iron oxide and zinc oxide, or excuse me, zinc oxide and isn't zinc titanium isn't, dioxide. Isn't that what they would put on their noses yes. a lot of times? Yeah. Yeah. And that's all it is. It's a physical barrier. So when you have zinc oxide, non nanized, non nano, zinc or titanium so zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are the two most common most effective minerals but that's exactly it it goes on white this product goes on white and then once it settles down it goes back to clear so you know okay. that it's like you know where your coverage is when you're spraying it or when you're using a the lotion right 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 so it's yeah it's great it's very very useful cool well yeah do that folks and then like don't get burned and so forth yeah, limiting sun exposure is really helpful. When you do have a baseline tan, it's better. Now, the thing, I love what you said too. You don't like to wear sunscreen if you don't need to because the sun, UV rays actually do a lot for us. Feels wonderful. I love it. Yeah, it feels great, but it actually it helps you to make vitamin D. And in this particular part of the globe that we live in, in Pennsylvania here, we don't get a lot of the specific type of UV radiation that creates vitamin D in the skin. We actually only get about two months of the year of that UV radiation to be able to create good vitamin D. What months are those? I think July and August. Mm. Yes. We July and August or August and September. I think July and August. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is to create vitamin D. So when you have sun exposure, UVB, UVA radiation, both of them, you need UVB rays to interact with the cholesterol on your skin or in your skin rather, and it creates vitamin D. That is the best, most effective way of getting vitamin D. Like there's a lot of vitamin D supplements out there, but if we just expose ourselves to the sun for a few minutes every day during when it's the highest during the months in Pennsylvania here, July and August, you can make all the vitamin D that your body needs for the entire year. Oh, wow. Yeah. You create the inactive form of vitamin D, which I forget what the technical term for that is, but 25 hydroxy vitamin D or something like this. Yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. Um, the inactive form of vitamin D kind of just stays and hangs out in your body. And when your body needs the active form, it goes and converts it into the active form and you're ready to go. The problem is you can only, like I said, create it during 
high sun between what 12 and 3 that's when it's the highest in the sky or something like that mm, or, okay. or 11 and, and 2 so a lot of people probably aren't getting the proper amount no one goes out during that time right we everyone's work, in their office or whatever mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah no one's out in the sun or we're covered in tons of sunscreen like even now a lot of makeup has sunscreen built into it hmm. so you're not even absorbing you know the vit- the uv rays into your face to begin with you need a lot of skin exposure to make that much vitamin D to last for the whole year. Yeah. So you basically have to go out in your bikini and lay in the sun for 10 minutes every day, sometime between 11 and 2, to make that vitamin D. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get, I want to lean out a little bit so I can <laughs> run shirtless. <laughs> yeah, but the thing that I'm also trying to get at is you don't need hours and hours of sun exposure to have a therapeutic effect. Right, you don't right. need to go out long enough where you're going to actually burn. Well, we talked about... Uh, you presented this as like if we want to avoid some seasonal affective disorder yeah. stuff is actually going to like a tanning salon mm-hmm. uh, in the in the kind of the off season mm-hmm. to get some of that vitamin D going. Yep. Which we I've had created vitamin D. I've heard more like kind of uh, biohack guys that are into fitness and health and stuff doing that yep. and not from like trying to be tan, but just trying to get that yep. that vitamin D. And I was like. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I never really considered doing that. I always thought it was kind of like a douchey thing to do, but it's... Uh, well, it kind of is if you're only trying to stay tan. You, you it doesn't. Right. It's not really douchey, but it's just like a little <laughs> bit more vain. Yes. But when you have yeah. a purpose, yeah, yeah, yeah. creating vitamin D to help balance your brain so that you don't feel really sad during the winter, I'm it makes pro more that. sense. I'm pro that. We should definitely give that a whirl next season. I actually know someone, did I tell you, who has a tanning <laughs> bed in her yeah, house? Yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. And she uses it. Yeah, She's I would, a fellow I would, NTP. I would totally do that. They can't be that expensive. Yeah they're not really i'm sure they're you know d- d- decent but like once then you're just running electricity mm-hmm. so yep. yeah so getting some good vitamin d exposure is fantastic getting some sunlight for that you need that then put your sunscreen on when you're going to be out for a longer time so i know this counter sun sunscreen is uh rated for 80 minutes when you're in water Oh, okay. Water resistant for 80 minutes. Hmm. It actually will stay totally fine and effective for up to two hours when you're not in the water. Gotcha. So, and that's a great, that's a decent amount of time. You have a little bit of sun exposure. You have, make sure you create some shade for yourself, maybe with an umbrella, parasol, or have, I used to, I used to always drive. I don't have to anymore, but I used to always drive with a very thin sweater in my car and I called it my driving sweater <laughs> because I'd have to wear it or else my left arm would get burned. Yeah. <laughs> like wrecked, burned yeah, you're such from a, driving. Such a sensitive child. I know. So I yeah. used to have to drive. You don't have to do that anymore. I though, don't right? have to anymore. No. It's great. Being hydrated also mm-hmm. is a, a big factor oh, yeah, in let's talk about yeah, that. not getting burned cuz again, the couple times I've gotten really now I've gotten definitely burned when I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know, being out in the sun doing whatever. Um, you know, down at Hilton Head, just get mm-hmm. cooking on the beach. Yeah. No, no shade or any, who cares? Um, but, uh, you know, the, in, in recent past, a lot of times, you know, you have some cocktails on the mm-hmm. beach <laughs> and, uh, a lot of them have been with you. Super fun time. Yeah, you know. Um, but then you're dehydrating yourself. So then you're, the likelihood of you burning goes up dramatically Mm -hmm. because you're, you know, you're kind of lowering your defenses too. You are. And when your skin cells are just dehydrated in general, they're not going to be as, um, buoyant. I don't know what word to use. They're not as full. We've talked about hydration before as like when your cells are dehydrated, it's like having a handful of raisins. Right, right, right. Your, your skin cells are kind of like a handful of raisins. They stick together. They clump. Things can't move. Cholesterol can't move to create a barrier. You know, all those things they can't do for you as easily as when they are hydrated. And that's like a handful of grapes. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, what's it, plump? Plump cells? That's not, it's not buoyant is not <laughs> the word. Full cells. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. Happy cells. Happy cells. Now, the other thing, you mentioned hydration, but another thing that you can do for yourself that's no, that's not a barrier method of skin protection is eating healthy fats. Oh, okay. I can see that. Yes. Essential fatty acid deficiency. People who are deficient in essential fatty acids burn more easily. Hmm. That's why I burned so easily back in the day. I was very uh, deficient. I couldn't digest my fats. I wasn't eating all that many fats, you know, way, way back in the day because I'm, you know, low fat vegan. That's like what you were supposed to do to be healthy. And I was, I was low fat vegan for like 10 years. Yep. Yep. So, and then I was never sicker in my life. Yeah. Yeah. The whole almost dying thing. Yeah. It's, it's okay to do that for a very short period of time. It's almost like a detox for the body kind of, but, um, in the long run doesn't really serve you very well. Anyway, getting good essential fatty acids, your skin, every cell in your body is made up of, contains what's called a phospholipid bilayer. That's the outside of the cell, cellular membrane, phospholipid, so fat 
bilayer, two layers of fats around every single cell. And if you're fat deficient or if you don't have good quality fats to build healthy layers on your cells, cellular membranes, they're not going to be as healthy. Interesting. Yeah, yep. I can see that. So when you increase your EFAs, your fatty acids, you actually increase your natural inborn skin protective health. Gotcha. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so do you, do you feel like we've adequately covered the sunscreen scenario? Um, checking my notes to see if I had anything. Oh, two other notes that I wanted to make mention of. When you have a chemical sunscreen like this banana boat stuff, it gets into your body, right? It gets into your cells and creates hormone disruption. And, and it, I shouldn't say necessarily hormone disruption. I don't want to get in trouble for that. But it mimics hormones in the body. And if you are a nursing mom, that actually goes from your breast milk to the baby, Ooh. which is not a good thing. You don't right, want to. If right, you're right. spending time and energy and eating organic and eating really healthy and trying to put good food into your system, and then you put regular old sunscreen on you, and that gets right into your baby, it's just like more chemicals, which is not what you don't want that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost like putting that flea medication on Gus. Like that yeah. tick medication is just yeah, like yeah. a little bit of poison. Just a little <laughs> bit. Just enough. Take the edge off. Yeah. And I did want to make one last mention. If anyone is listening and wants to buy the counter sun sunscreen, check out a link below where you can purchase it. But if you're spraying it, if you're getting the spray air spray can, do not spray it directly on your face. <laughs> that is counter indicated, contraindicated, and I don't actually know why, but everywhere it says spray it on your hands and then rub it on your face. Okay. So if you do, don't just spray it. I know that's the first thing I would have done is yeah, just close just, my eyes and yeah. sprayed it on my face. Right, right. Uh, but it's, they don't want you to do that. Gotcha. So rub gotcha. it on your face instead. <laughs> uh, I wanted to retouch on something that we, we kind of passed through, but... Sure. Um, I'm not saying don't drink on the beach. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you do drink and like you're having some beers and stuff, just be more mindful yeah, that bring you some shade. <laughs> that you may you may burn more easily, particularly if you haven't worked up to the point of having a nice base tan and mm-hmm. to the point where you can have like longer sun exposure. Yeah. And uh, you know, I always find down at Hilton Head, it's really those hours of like where the sun's at its peak. Yeah, that I've got to be like the most careful because I'm sure. out. You know. The afternoon sun's way less aggressive, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, and the morning sun is less aggressive. It's right, just that right. window, three hours or whatever it is, in the middle of the day that's the most aggressive. And I also want to mention, you said about having that baseline tan. If you have darker skin, tan, or just darker in general, it takes longer to create vitamin D. Oh. So if, you, if you're darker... You need to be exposed to sun for longer. Like for me, I can go out for 10 minutes and get good vitamin D because I'm very fair. But if you have a dark complexion, you definitely need to be exposed a little bit longer to make sure that you create vitamin D. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, you can take vitamin D like in a supplement form, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that's like the same deal? Um, It's kind of the same deal. There are two main supplement versions of vitamin D, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is basically what you make from the sun. Okay. But it is actually most supplements or even medications. A lot of people come to me on their own prescription medications of high, high doses of vitamin D, like 40,000 units or whatever, or or 100,000 units, huge high doses. The problem with a lot of those manufactured vitamin D supplements and even some medications is they're very um, difficult to break down and absorb. Hmm. And actually get into your body. And my opinion is that's why they have to give such mega doses to people because they're not absorbing it. Right. That makes sense. It's not as bioavailable. Gotcha. So gotcha. sun exposure is the best way to get vitamin D into your body because you create, it's like you put that on the shelf for later. Yeah. Right? You create the inactive form, which gets converted into the active form as needed. Whereas virtually all supplements are active forms of vitamin D and you can overdose on vitamin D. You can get too much and it can become poisonous to the body. Ooh. Not from natural sun exposure. You're going to burn before you get too much vitamin D. Right, right. Well, you can get sun poisoning, oh I guess, gosh, from yeah, uh, right. which you've got. <laughs> oh, <it's been. laughs> oh, miserable. Yeah, which you're going to get burned. Yeah. Nice and crispy. Yeah, but that's like nature's way of preventing you from overdosing on vitamin D. Right, right. right. And then when you take it as a supplement form, it's first of all going to be not as bioavailable. So you have to use mega doses. And then when you do use mega doses, most of the time, doctors and people are not monitoring blood levels and you can very easily overdose yourself and that causes a whole lot of problems vitamin d is cancer protective and can even reverse a cancer in some cases but if you have too much of it it'll cause cancer right like just the opposite of what you want it to do yeah yeah so maybe 
So maybe don't do that. Yeah. Now, there are some really good forms of vitamin D that have already been emulsified. And the emulsification is the process that's digesting it, basically. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, which means it has to bond to a fat molecule before your body can absorb it. Gotcha. Which is why we talked about cholesterol in the skin. Cholesterol is a fat molecule. Each of our cellular membranes, one of the phospholipid bilayers, is cholesterol. So it bonds to that cholesterol and gets absorbed directly into the skin. Gotcha. Right? So there are some really nice water, or not water, water solubles, just soluble. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Emulsified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emulsified vitamin D supplements out there that are really nice. Those are the best. Gotcha. You can use a much lower dose because your body's actually absorbing it, like almost on contact with the skin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I should mention, there is a really big trend right now in sun sunscreen, sun protection in the essential oil community. Oh, you're talking about like the people are making their own? Yes, the DIY essential oil community when people are making it for themselves where they use vitamin A, like a carrot seed oil or um, raspberry seed oil has a lot of vitamin A. And I would definitely encourage anybody listening not to do that because... And why is that? Vitamin A is an extremely potent, again, fat-soluble vitamin. The fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. And A can very quickly poison you, very, very, very easily poison you. And if you're using huge amounts to make sunscreen and rubbing it all over your body, you're going to put yourself into a really bad spot very quickly. What would poisoning you look like? Um, I don't know. I don't know specifically. It's just normal, like vomiting, diarrhea, oh, so all make, kinds of like so poisoning yourself, really yourself. Sick. Yeah, yeah. But you can literally cause damage. Like you can cause cancer and those types of things, like gotcha. significant problems by overdosing on vitamin A. So be very careful. Be very careful. I very rarely, even with my clients from a therapeutic perspective, I very rarely ever use vitamin A supplementation because it's so easy to overdose. And if we don't have a, a health practitioner who orders blood work regularly... I'm not, I don't even go near it. Right, right. Because no one's monitoring it. Because no one's monitoring it. Putting them in the danger zone. Correct. And you don't know. You just don't know. Gotcha. So, and it's not like you would immediately vomit if you got to the higher dose. It's like you could develop tumors or whatever, you know, not, not good. Yeah. So So the, the safest method I know is limiting sun exposure, giving yourself actual barriers like thin clothing or an umbrella or using something like a mineral-based non-nanized sunscreen. Yeah, staying hydrated. Staying hydrated, eating good healthy fats. Healthy fats, fats all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, in the long run, it's not that hard. No, no. What's, it just seems like the healthier you are in general, the less likely, the, the more resilient you're going to be to burning and those types of things. Mm-hmm. So one of the other things I wanted to, to I have two things I wanted to yeah, touch on. Uh, one of them is... You know, we talk about something, we've talked about a few things that you put on your skin. Probably the most common thing that everybody puts on their skin is deodorant, uh, particularly in your underarms, which is like kind of where in your armpits where everybody puts it on. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, way back in the day uh, when I was a little chubby fella, uh, Mm. stuck in class, Mm. uh, a lot of times I would sweat and it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I would use, I, I found some crazy, it was basically like, pure aluminum i was oh, rubbing in my no. armpits which is not good for you at all because uh, i don't think your body can metabolize it so yeah your body doesn't have a way to detox aluminum so at all. but it basically clogs your pores so you didn't didn't sweat but man mm-hmm. your my armpits got like was super irritated and mm-hmm. then gradually i would switch to like you know old navy like old old spice old spice not old, uh, not old navy <laughs> um old spice and uh you know the, and they have some that aren't um that don't have any um like antiperspirants are usually the ones that block the pores. Right. That's what usually contains aluminum. Yeah. And then, the, but then there's some that are just deodorants that are just usually a topical chemical compound that mm-hmm. smells nice basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even that I found eventually would be irritating to my yeah, skin. Yeah, you get like red, almost blisters. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then now what I landed on is, uh, the, cause I tried some of your hippie deodorant, which is like different, uh, like safer, uh, like yeah, Tom's there are and Tom's of Maine and a yeah. lot of other non, um, aluminum based deodorants, not antiperspirants. Yeah. Now let's touch on this real quick before you move on. Antiperspirants have now been shown to cause a lot of health problems because of the aluminum component. So if you're, if you're using aluminum deodorants, it's, I would highly encourage you to look into some other brands that are non aluminum based 
it, it's not going to prevent you. The deodorants are not going to prevent you from sweating, but you want to sweat. Yeah. It, the healthier yeah. you are, the less you're going to sweat really. Yeah. It's not like you're going to be like pouring water out of your armpits, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you still want to smell good and feel good. The aluminum really, it, they're showing a lot of research that aluminum toxicity is one of the number one factors of Alzheimer's. Yep. Yep. And that's because, like I said, our bodies have no physical capacity to detoxify to get aluminum out. So right. what they're showing now is that aluminum then gets stored in the brain and causes all these problems. So, and like, who knew? 50 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is, you're putting on aluminum deodorant and then now you have Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Terrible. So hopefully that won't happen to me or they'll have some science figured out by then. Yeah. Um, so the sooner you can switch to a non-aluminum based deodorant, that would be awesome. Yeah. So what I like, what I landed on over the years is uh, Sam's Natural. Um, and uh, it's it's all, um, let's see, it's sodium bicarbonate, coconut Which is oil. Which baking soda. Um, some, some waxes, air root power, MCT oil, pumpkin seed oil. Uh, a lot of a lot of just kind of natural oils, and mm-hmm. then it actually smells decent, and they have a, a variety of uh, flavors um, that are you know it it lasts sense. it lasts a decent <laughs> flavor sense, flavors same thing. Yeah. flavors um, for your nose. but but it actually smells decent, and like I'm someone who I exercise quite a mm-hmm. bit. I'll also say from a you know you mentioned being healthy. Um, I also find that you know because I had a friend that. Um, uh, I actually went to freshman year college with, uh, he was in a couple grades ahead of me, but he always said like, he thought it was a good idea to break a sweat every day. Yeah. That was like kind of one of his, yes. his rules. Um, but, uh, I, I, in, in recent, like I've got, I've done a lot of Bikram yoga. Mm-hmm. I've done, you know, jujitsu. Which is hot yoga for those who yeah. may not know. And jujitsu and, uh, Muay Thai. And mm-hmm. like, that's all like fight training stuff. And then, uh, now, whenever I work out, uh, like a regular kind of strength and conditioning workout, I'm sweating when I do that, but mm-hmm. I'm also doing, um, like I'll jump in the sauna yeah, afterwards and do like great. 30 minutes of sauna or I'll jump in the steam, steam room and do steam as well. And I'm like sweating so much that I have, because <laughs> I sweat so much and so much of the fluid is just moving through me. Like I have no problem. Like I don't, I no longer have any like random uh, underarm sweat because my body's so used to, it has plenty of opportunities to, uh, you know, detox, detox, all of that. And I feel, uh, whenever I take time off and I'm not exercising and sweating how much I normally do, I always, that's actually when, if I, my underarms get irritated, it's Mm. when I'm not sweating the same amount that I usually do. But just from giving my body a lot of opportunities to sweat yeah that's why i love when it's super hot mm-hmm. i love running when it's hot because it's just you just sweat and it feels awesome that's why i like bikram yoga yeah. and uh you know fight training like this past week we had we were doing training in the gi there's oh, no yeah. air conditioning in the gym and it was humid as shit this week can you tell me what a gi is a gi so in in brazilian jiu-jitsu there's kind of two uh, the traditional garb is the gi, which is like if you've watched the Karate Kid or, you know, you're used to that. So it's it's a, like a uniform. It's a uniform that has kind of the pants and the gi top that has reinforced collars mm. on it. And then you see like they have the belt mm-hmm. tied. So that's the traditional. So almost like wearing a bathrobe. It is It is almost more hot because mm. the the the... In jujitsu, the gis have to be really, really, really durable mm. because people are choking each other with them. Mm-hmm. And that's why the collars are reinforced. That you makes have sense. really heavy material. It's super hot. And usually yeah. you've got a rash guard underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's stupid hot. And then it was like so humid this week. Yeah. So like you just sweat so much. It's like really, yeah. it's really like, you know, rolling around in a sauna. Plus you have another large dude on top of you absorbing their heat or or like in combat with that you're pushing and pulling so most of the time i really like no gi which is Mm -hmm. just like a rash guard and kind of fight shorts or board shorts on Mm -hmm. which is uh it change up it's more it's more akin to uh submission grappling but anyway that's thank you that's why i'm pushing for no gi summer in our gym but we'll see see if that catches on um but anyway, I just find the more I sweat, the mm-hmm. better I feel in yes. general. But I have zero skin irritation in my underarms either. Mm-hmm. With uh, even when I'm using like the the Sam's Natural, but I just found that, mm-hmm. and I also have no like random sweating mm-hmm. uh, for no reason. Like I did, you know, I was in you know, ele- like I guess it was middle school or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, and I think that's a really great thing to point out for people because sweating is one of your body's 
best ways of detoxification. Yeah. Right. We often, I'm going to go on a little bit of a trail here. We often think about detox and we think about like these crazy juice diets or whatever, but our body has three main forms, sources to detoxify waste and junk products and contaminants and all these things out of our body through bowel movements, through urination and through sweating. Yeah. And sweating is one in our culture that like we, everybody accepts you poop every day or, you know, not everybody knows that, but you should poop every day. You should pee every day. Most everyone pees every day. Uh, your body, it's an open detox pathway. Things get to move through you very easily. Yeah. And you are totally right. You should sweat every day. You should somehow sweat and get things to move through your system. That's one of the best ways to help junk get out of your lymphatic system. A lot, yeah. a lot of people recently have been talking about your lymph and helping to support your lymphatic system. That's another form of detoxification in the body. And one of the best ways to help support a healthy lymph system is through sweating. Yeah. So, And you're right. One of the things when you do sweat more regularly, you clear those pathways out right? You're getting rid of any stuff that's clogged up in your pores and your sweat does not smell horrible. You know what I mean? Oh no, not. And dude, uh, just from my, my fight experience, um, training in all these fight gyms, there are some dudes that absolutely reek when they sweat and you're like, what are you eating? Yeah. that smells like that. Yep. What's really funny is whenever it's like after a holiday weekend, you can tell a lot of people have been drinking. You can like smell the alcohol coming yeah. out of their pores. It's pretty funny. Yep. Um, but yeah, That's my, I don't, I don't stink when mm-hmm. I sweat. It just, yep. it is like water run up particularly because when my pathways are open and I'm, yep. I, you know, I try and hit that. I'm either doing, uh, some sort of extreme temperature exposure mm-hmm. through, training with a gi on, uh, you know, wearing a hoodie when I do strength and conditioning, going into the sauna, steam room, running when it's hot, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, you know, you bring that core temperature up mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's like, uh, but I, when I'm doing it real consistently, mm-hmm. I just feel it, like mentally a lot clearer, like everything just feels better. Yep. So huge. Yep. I'm a big fan of, I mean, if you anybody listens to Joe Rogan mm-hmm. or, or Dr. Rhonda Patrick, any of those people, um, you know, sauna has starting to like kind of come mm-hmm. back. A lot of people are getting their own personal saunas. I know when we get our, yep. our, our next humble abode, uh, we're going to definitely figure out a way to fit a sauna yeah. either somewhere on the property for, yep, sure. for sure. Cause I think it's, it's, uh, it's one of the best ways to get, you know, heat shock proteins, yep. sweat awesome. and, uh, and the it's, healthier you yeah. are the faster you should sweat in those circumstances. A lot of people like we do Epsom salt baths and I use that as a therapeutic tool for a lot of my clients who maybe aren't physically capable to run like you, you know, to do the things that you do that helps them to sweat. And if you sit in a bathtub that is as hot as you can possibly stand it, you're in that bathtub for 20 minutes and you don't sweat at all. I know we've got a lot of detox work we have to do. It's actually another way fighters cut weight is hot baths Hmm. too. FYI. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, but you should be able to sweat. I remember when I first started doing Epsom salt baths in a hot bathtub, I couldn't sweat. Hmm. I could not. I was, I would sit in that bathtub until I would sweat and the water would get cold. Yeah. And I wouldn't sweat. So that's, yeah, I've, I've never had, I've always been an easy sweater, yeah. I guess. Which is good. That's really, that's a very good sign of a clear open, open pathway. Open pathways. Yeah. So on, on, do you have uh, other stuff? About deodorant, deodorant, yes. Can Sorry. I jump back yep. to the deodorants real quick? So I do want to make mention, you said you went through some of my other, de- you kind of were a little dismissive. Those hippie deodorants. Hey, that's a hippie deodorant. It is. Well, I'm just, oh, sorry. I, sh- I should have, I should have recapped that I found one that, you know, worked for me the best. Yeah. So, yes. so that's, and that's, and that's, what I wanted to mention. and that's, you know, like I said, it's this one. Um, but I, I tried some other ones that just didn't, for me, I'm a very active guy. Even mm-hmm. my job, I'm up and down and moving a lot. I couldn't have something that failed after like an hour. Right, so. right, exactly. And I wanted to just say that a lot of these natural deodorants, it because there's not a chemical component that's physically altering the state of your armpit, aluminum, they interact with your own specific body chemistry sometimes. So those other deodorants might work really well. I know some people who swear by Tom's Natural. Yeah. Or Tom's of Maine. Yeah. Sam's natural. Tom's of Maine. Yep. These men's names. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they love it because it works great for their body chemistry. So this one works really great for you. The, the active ingredient here is sodium bicarbonate. That's baking soda. And what baking soda does is it alkalinizes the environment of your armpit, which prevents bacteria from growing. When we have smelly armpits, it's because bacteria grows and our arms are down most of the time. And that's what smells. Hmm. If you prevent that bacteria from growing either with aluminum, uh, sorry, with um, sodium bicarbonate, 
or with another component, then that's what prevents you from smelling. So for you, just alternating a little bit. If you run out of this one day and you need a little bit of something, go make a little paste of water and baking soda, and that's going to have a very similar effect for you. Interesting. Okay. Now, my favorite natural deodorant, I've tried a whole bunch too, is called Piper Y. And it comes in a little jar, a little two ounce jar. And it seems like not a lot, but I, this is the second jar I've had. The first jar I bought last July. And I just threw away the container three weeks ago. Oh, wow. So it, two ounces last me for a really long time. I, I was like, I'm going to try this $11 for this jar. But hey, it lasted me how many months? Amazing. Yeah. You don't have to use very much. The active ingredient in here is not baking soda. It's charcoal. Interesting. Activated charcoal, which again will alter a little bit of the pH, but also prevent other bacteria from growing. Gotcha. And it has a really nice smell. I love how it smells. They have a little jar. Ah, freshly, a little spearminty almost. Okay. Um, it almost feels like you're at a spa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's great. They have a bar and they have a jar and I like the jar because it's a little bit easier to put on a small amount. You don't need a lot. You just need to create a very thin layer on your armpit so that nothing else will grow. Right. right. Works really great for me and I really like it. I've gone through a bunch of different natural deodorants and I've actually found that as my body has gotten healthier and healthier, once, you know, some will work for a period of time, then my body chemistry changes or I'm sweating more or I've gotten healthier in some way. My pH might be changing, right? The pH of your sweat might be changing and then a different deodorant needs to work best for you. So if you've tried, if anybody listening has tried natural deodorants and you say, oh, it doesn't work. I don't want, I don't like that. I have some clients who've said, things, I sound more grumbly than they do. No one sounds like that to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you say, well, it hasn't, didn't work for me. Keep trying. And I know it's an investment. I know they're a little more expensive than other deodorants, but keep trying until you find one that works. You can't, there's enough out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And here's another one. My wonderful friend, Megan, my best friend, Megan, she swears by this. She tried all kinds of natural deodorants. She did Tom's, she did all these things. And her favorite right now, and it works stunningly well, apple cider vinegar on a cotton ball. All right. Just stab it on there. I feel like that wouldn't smell all that Only good. for a minute. And then it all dissipates. Right. All right. And because she said, you know, at first you feel like you smell like a salad. And then <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I would. Yeah. But then, you know, you get ready for your day. It dries and it does the same thing. It just shifts the pH a little bit so that those bacteria aren't going to grow. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's a really cheap, easy way to try that. You can try the baking soda paste. You can try it with apple cider vinegar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make your own Don't do that. Day. It's going to foam. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Make Acid and alkaline. <laughs> make a volcano in your armpit. Um, <laughs> Terrible. That's that's what it is, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's a little science yeah. experiment. Um, okay, so, so your last thing you wanted to talk about, yeah. Jeremy. Let's. So you have had an interesting little bout here when when you roll when you do jujitsu and all of that. You're exposed to a lot of stuff on the mats. Um, so some of it's from the mats, but I was talking to uh, actually one of the guys at our gym's a doctor, and we mm-hmm. were talking about skin stuff because um, he both he. We both had ringworm at the same time. Yeah, can you um, tell us what ringworm is too? Ringworm is, um, if anyone's heard of athlete's foot, I think everyone mm-hmm. should at this point. It's uh, it's just a... I've heard of it and knowing what it is is different. Yeah, so ringworm and um, athlete's foot are the same thing. It's a it's a f- fungus, so it's a... Okay, so it's not actually a worm. No, it's not. It's not a worm. It's a fungal growth, if you will, um, that gets on your skin but it's topical like where a staph infection is something that's like in you Mm. the the athlete's foot is just on the surface it doesn't permeate through your dermal layer into like your blood and shit okay whereas staph does staph does now are you saying did you bring up staph because it's similar to ringworm staph is if anyone is into like working out and jujitsu and fighting those are the two common ones is Mm. staph infections and uh, ringworm. Okay. So, and generally both come from, um, ringworms way, way, way more common. Mm-hmm. Um, because you, you know, someone gets it, they roll, it spreads from skin to skin mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, particularly people don't have the best of hygiene. Yeah. Um, and then it, uh, sometimes it just comes through in waves. I do think that clean mats have something to do with it. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm more pro cleaning the mats with some sort of solution every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, what what I have found is it, the most of the times that it happens to me, it's because I get a scratch. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a lot of times you get uh, what's called like uh, z- zippered is mm-hmm. usually on your neck where someone grabs you and then they're, oh, they're y- you slip from head and arm control and their 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 hands your their fingernails rake your neck and it mm-hmm. looks like you got this huge zipper mark. Um, or a lot of times it's around like the wrist area because people are constantly grabbing your wrist. So that's what happened to me. I got some 
some little scratches. scratches that then got uh, the the ringworm situation going on. Um, but most of the time, I this is my first in a long time. Yeah, so I'm I, usually since we've been married, you have never had and it. And one of the reasons is I I almost I'm like religious about using this new soap that I mm-hmm. got, and I started using it a couple years ago. Uh, Joe Rogan turned me on to it. It's mm-hmm. uh, called Defense Soap, and I've got uh, people. Most people aren't watching this, but for for those on the just on the podcast audio side, it's called Defense Soap. It was made by um, a guy who uh, it's specifically for grapplers mm. wrestlers he i believe he's a wrestling coach okay and uh he wanted to protect his wrestlers get this a lot too because it's yeah. body to body contact a lot of sweat um you and know especially mats. it makes sense if it's a fungal growth yeah any moist yeah. environment funguses will grow so in uh but like what happens in gus's ear <laughs> yeah ringworm athlete's foot jock itch that's all the same stuff um and it also prevents um, like staff and stuff mm. as well. So what you what, what are the, what's active in there? What, why does it work? Um, I didn't. I just know it works. It's all sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see directions. Blah blah. Oh, it's a uh, tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil, and it's got uh, sodium palmate, sodium. Those yeah, are I'm just the soap ingredients. Yeah, but anyway. just the two essential oils. But it's tea tree oil and eucalyptus oil, like the two big ones. And what it what it does is like you, what you don't want to do is use a lot of antibacterial soap yeah. because it kills your skin flora, mm-hmm. much like the good bacteria. Yeah, the that good bacteria. Be there. Much like if you take antibiotics, it kills the good bacteria With in the your bad ones. in your stomach mm-hmm. um, and elsewhere in your body. But like, so I've found that when I when I got these two ringworm situations going on, I ran out of defense soap oh. and I wasn't using it. I was using like regular stuff. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And uh, I just. I didn't stock up in time, but that's the the window which in mm-hmm. which I got it. It's sense. also uh, a lot of people that use it, hot yoga people, mm-hmm. uh, wrestlers, athletes, and um, and then like a lot of guys in the fight community are like use defense soap. He, they also have uh, this like healing salve, which is like an even more concentrated mm-hmm. version of it. So if you and know it you has get a couple other ingredients too. Yeah, this one does. But if you get a little like hot spots and you know it's like, ooh, mm. I got a cut or something, you just throw that on there just so to make, make sure that you don't get, you know, anything anything weird going on. But Wait, yeah. preemptively or like as a spot treatment when it's you a spot see treat, something? spot treatment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the so def- the soap's more preemptive and then the spot treatment's for like, oh the crap, def- I see something growing. The defense soap. So I have I have the defense soap, I have the defense wipes. Oh, so yeah, so I use that like if I know if I'm going to jujitsu, I roll and I got real sweaty and stuff. If I know I'm not going to have an opportunity to shower real quickly, I'll use a wipe and wipe real your quick body down and just wipe like the exposed skin areas that I had while I was rolling, mm. um, and just to kind of like make sure. But I also found that even going to uh, like my normal strength and conditioning gym. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of those machines are disgusting. Oh yeah. Or like you know your benches and stuff, and even in the locker room, uh, I always wear uh, flip flops mm-hmm. in the locker Good. room when I go to do sauna and stuff too. And I'll use defense wipes after that as well because like you wipe down the bench, you have to sit on. No, because it's like wood, so I don't think it's oh. really gonna. And I'm usually wearing shorts in there, so yeah, well, of course. But it's just like, yeah, just try and try and. Uh, prevent people from from uh, experiencing some of that but mm-hmm. that's the defense wipes i think are great to have in your gym bag yeah that's great and uh even even in our like a hot yoga gym if you feel kind of skeevy or you're you know maybe you went and visited a gym and you're like i don't know how well this is kept clean i, I definitely recommend uh using the defense soap or or something similar that's not going to it really promotes healthy uh, skin flora mm-hmm. so that because you you're yeah. you've got Machine like a, a nice you've got like a defensive line on your skin mm-hmm. most things that come into contact even like the microbial stuff will get killed by your healthy skin flora yeah isn't it called lysosomes you have lysosomes on your skin you would know more than me yeah yeah i think that's one of your bodies they're like enzymatic bacteria kind of that live on your yeah. skin something like this that helps prevent pathogenic bacteria from growing and i love the defense soap because it uses those essential oils like you said so they're almost like selective antibacterial as opposed to general antibacterial we've thankfully as a culture we're starting to come away from the 100 percent antibacterial everything right, right. because we realize we have over sterilized a lot of things where now we don't have any of the good bacteria left because we need those guys too yeah and i just want to emphasize it was created by a wrestling coach a guy mm-hmm. specifically for grappling and people doing hot yoga. So mm-hmm. like if you're into awesome. that stuff, it's, it's not, it's like kind of a uh, by an athlete for athletes. Mm-hmm. And he, he particularly wanted his 
kids that he was coaching to yeah. not have any of those the ringworm stuff because it's just tough to get rid of once once it, of once it starts spreading it's actually ringworms super easy um you can do some some uh i would just recommend if you're going to do that and it actually manifests uh-huh. like i was having it just once you treat it it really goes away yeah. relatively quickly but there's all kinds of um like Lamisil. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's an stuff. antifungal cream, right? It's an antifungal cream, yeah, and it's just and that's a, just like a prescription, not a prescription. You can it, buy it over the counter, yeah, but it's yeah, like yeah. a medicated, and they not have, an antifungal. And they have oil one, one that's Lamisil, like uh, it's like Lamisil ringworm, or oh. um, there's another one that just says ringworm on it. It's perfect. That's exactly yeah. what you want. So, and then you just do the where it's localized, and then it and then it right. kind of goes away. That's cool. But anyway, my my. If you just don't want to have to mess with that at all, if you use defense soap, it's very unlikely you will have a problem with ringworm. Yeah, in that's the first really place. awesome. So that's yeah. my that's my little plug for that. I'm not we're not sponsored by them or anything. I just really I've recommended it product. to a lot of my jujitsu compadres and anybody in that space. So yeah, it's very cool. I like the eucalyptus component, and I didn't say this earlier, but there is a there are different variety of, of eucalyptus and there's one that's called lemon eucalyptus and that's a fantastic anti-mosquito anti whatever um essential oil as well so that you, you even have a little bit of that there eucalyptus in general <laughs> yeah there you go there you go so uh, anything else you want to touch on sweetness i think we covered all the things i think i yeah. don't have, i don't think i have anything left on our notes yeah i got uh i got to all the little thing things i want to talk about so, yeah but uh yeah it's pretty good i think good. we covered a lot. a lot there's a lot you can do to have healthier skin and healthier skin flora and um, protect yourself from the sun. And that's really not that much work or that expensive, you know? Right, right. I, I just always find that to take a look at the things that you're putting on yourself every day, because mm-hmm. uh, those will compound very quickly over time. Well, your skin so. is the largest organ of your body. We don't yep. think about that, but your yep. skin is an organ. It's just exposed to everything, right? And you absorb a huge amount of what you put on your skin. Even if you're like... For example, walking through a big cloud of smoke, like someone's smoking nearby, you'll absorb some of that through your skin. Right. You don't right. need to breathe it. You'll still absorb it. So paying attention to what products you put on your body matters. Yep. Significantly can, can significantly improve your quality of life by making a tiny little change. Yep, yep, yep. So this is not what was on our notes, but I also want to mention this while we're here. Things like lotions and skincare products like that. I used to be a huge fan and I loved bed, uh, not bed, Beth Beyond, Bath and Body Works oh, yeah. <laughs> lotions and stuff. They smelled so nice, but they're filled with so much junk. So much of it is filled <laughs> with junk and I just can't do it anymore. There are some now, they have some of their candles that use essential oils rather than fragrance perfumes. Right, which right. Which is nice because even when you burn fragrances like that, like candles, you breathe that in and that can be harmful. So essential oils are much safer. Most of them do your research first because some you shouldn't do. Gotcha. To breathe. But, Putting things on your skin, you, I, I kind of think about it of like, would I eat this? If I wouldn't <laughs> eat this, why would I put it on my skin? Yeah, yeah. Not always. There's some things that you wouldn't eat that are safe to put on your skin, but... Yeah, yeah. watch what you put on our, our skin and uh, try and sweat a lot. It's good. Try and sweat a lot and yeah. get a little bit of exposure to the sun. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. All right, guys, we will see you in the outro. And that is it for us today, folks. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope that it was useful for you and you learned some things. There's some valuable information here, you know, skincare, sun protection, bug spray, all that stuff is really useful. The things you put on your body go into your body. So it's great to have some options that are less toxic. For show notes, you can find that on our website at thepainterandthepixie.com. For updates and fun things, you can follow us on Instagram at thepainterandthepixie. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to do us for this week. Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> <laughs> Gus says hello. Gus is like, okay, wrap this up. Ready it's to time go to, outside and play yeah, that sun. <laughs> put, put a pin in this. He's like, spray me down with that tick stuff. Let's get after it. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, hey, y'all relax. Be kind to one another. And uh, we will see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Amazing.